Joel, do you read? This is Raven. Roger, Raven. What's your status? I've exited the Hilo, and I'm commencing recon of the plateau. Intel indicates light foot patrols and some forward observation posts only. Proceed with caution, and you should reach the sniper hides with little opposition. Understood. The plateau will provide you with three OPs which overlook each target location. They should give you a good line of sight on any hostiles. Sounds like a piece of cake. Except for the range, and with no spotter. I'm confident you won't miss. It's one of the reasons we picked you. No pressure, then. Let me know when you've reached the first OP. Roger that. Raven out. What's up, ladies and gents? I'm your host, Sinistrator One, and welcome to my exclusive gameplay for Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2. Thanks to CI Games for allowing me to show this off to you guys super early. We're going to be playing this on the PC in 4K, everything set up to max using an RTX 3090. So let's begin. This is going to be nice and stealth like, which you guys are used to. This is the first mission outside of the tutorial. Don't. Please, don't kill me! Then tell me where the other soldiers are. Yeah, that way. I'm going to be using controller only because I want to make sure that the camera movements are nice and smooth, so they're not jerky for you. Otherwise, uh, obviously we could play this with a keyboard and mouse to get even better aiming. The other soldiers. Point them out. Over my dead body! Really? Your choice. We are also playing this on the hardest difficulty, which is Dead Eye, meaning that there's going to be no help. We're going to have to figure out where we need to shoot the shots ourselves by using the correct windage as well as the elevation. So if you've played Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 1, then you're fully aware of just how the game mechanics work. Um, there's a lot of options for you. You can either go in guns blazing, uh, you can go in stealthy, or you can kind of do a mixture of both. We're going to do a mixture of both here, but for the most part, we're going to be stealthy because that's what this channel loves to do. Uh, so make sure you leave a like for that good old stealth gameplay. So we're going to be doing a lot of sniping in this mission. I am using the regular weapons that you get at the very beginning of it. So we do not have a silencer on our weapon because the game wants you to complete this mission first before it gives you that. Because these are very long sniper shots you can take and you'll see why up ahead. This is Raven with a sit rep. Roger, Raven. Go ahead. I'm heading for the OP overlooking the port. Good. We just received some fresh intel on Zaza. He may be conducting a deal today. Our sources tracked a known weapons supplier crossing the border earlier and heading on the main road to that location. If we're lucky, you'll catch them both. Do you have anything on the supplier's ETA? Negative. But one of the locals may have more info. Look for a hostile stationed near one of the comms relays. I'm sure they've heard the chatter. I probably won't be asking him nicely. How you do it is up to you. So one of the things that this game added is the ability to do super, super long shots. Meaning that, at least in this mission, there are going to be uh, some instances where you're not going to actually be able to get up close and personal to any of the targets you need to take out. Meaning that they are so far away and there's like a body of water in between them, you cannot actually physically go over there. So at the beginning of the game, it, uh, it pretty much gives you, and forces, no, I wouldn't say forces you, but it gives you a very, very long rifle to use. However, that rifle has no silencer on it. Obviously, you guys know the deal. I'll never tell you where those supplies are. No reason to keep you alive, then. There. Over there. And what I mean by you guys know the deal is the fact that uh, we don't want to get caught by shooting. So if you are shooting and let's say an enemy is within about 150 to 200 meters away, they will be able to hear your shots. However, if you're, you know, over 800, 900 meters away from 
the target. They're not going to be able to hear as long as there's no one in the immediate vicinity. And you can use this to your advantage, so you don't necessarily have to have a silencer on your rifle in order to remain stealthy. You just need to be able to pinpoint specific enemies in different locations and make sure that there is enough space between them, you, and each other if that makes sense. So most of the time we're going to be sneaking around these sections. There's like a few sections here where you have to go up against a few enemies, kind of like a checkpoint almost. You can either bypass these enemies or you can take them out if you want to kind of work on the stealth mechanics of the game. However, if you've played the Sniper Ghost Warrior series and you pretty much know exactly what type of mechanics that is, it's very bare bones, but it's still very intuitive and it feels good. Uh, when you actually go up, you have two choices to either interrogate or to just take them out as quickly as possible. Either one is a very stealthy maneuver, meaning that uh, unless the unless there's another enemy like right next to the person, no one is going to be able to hear, so you can easily interrogate or take them out quickly. However, you do need to remember that if someone is close and you do an interrogation, you're in the middle of that interrogation, maybe they heard it and you can easily be shot by then, or you just need to be careful to make sure that they don't turn around in time, and then you should hopefully be good to go. So we're going to go ahead and bypass the rest of that. We're going to be bypassing a lot of enemies because we're going to be moving into the next objectives that we need to do. There's a little bit of a parkour system here uh, that you can use to jump around. But you all should be used to it pretty much by now. And we're going to head on to our first target up ahead. First, we need to interrogate him, and then we'll be ready to go. The other soldiers. Point him out. Over my dead body! Really? Your choice. Control, it's Raven. I'm in position above the port. Copy that. Plan your shots carefully. Zaza's likely to run if you miss. So no alarms? Well, not before Zaza is dead at least. So in this situation, like I said, you cannot get over to there. However, I found a pretty uh, cool way to do this stealthy without anyone seeing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to shoot this fuse box here. Now, with this long-ranged rifle, it makes it a lot easier to be able to shoot long-range. But if you had a shorter rifle, even with a sniper, or excuse me, with a suppressor, you'd still be able to pull this off. It'd just be a little bit harder to do because you don't have as much uh, scope range as you would with the longer rifles. So we're going to shoot the fuse box. That's going to get the attention of the two guards that are going to come over here to check it out. Our target is going to be coming this way. This is how you know it's on dead eye because you don't see the windage meter go up and down. And also, uh, you don't see how far they are away unless you actually go into your binoculars. So it's a very tough shot to pull off, but you can do it. Even though we only shoot him in the arm, he's still dead. Like a glove. <laughs> target splashed. Zarza's down. Impressive. Not the record, though. Not this time. Besides, this op is off the books. Nothing here you can claim. But as you can see, we did that stealthy without no one seeing, and because you can't get over there, I guess those guys just really disappear once you leave. Because there's nothing that says you got caught or anything like that uh, once you get past that point. Now, at this point, you can actually turn in your mission and then start using some of the points that you get in order to upgrade your weapons. Say if you wanted to get a different uh, sniper rifle, maybe one with like medium range and then also get something with a suppressor. So that way it's a little bit more stealthier, but uh, you don't need to turn your stuff in and we're not going to turn anything in until the end of the mission. We're going to use just the weapon that uh, the game gives us at the very beginning of the first mission. Again, as you can see, so the, the marks on the radar, the little red squares, they indicate where your main objectives are located. Or so they say they indicate the area that they are located. You can use rocks to lure enemies out as well. We'll use that sometimes. Uh, but most of the time, we're going to be bypassing some enemies. Again, if you want to get... Uh, 
hot and heavy, go ahead and take them out all you want. But a good sniper knows that he only needs to be seen if it's the last line of measure. So obviously we're going to be bypassing a lot of these guards. Uh, specifically, if you follow the route that I take here, then uh, you'll have very, very little guards that you need to interact with uh, in order to get closer to the next objective. So where we're heading is all the way over to the left side and up the hill. Uh, you can go to the left side if you want to do that, but I like to go uh, the water route because I feel like it's... Uh, you only have to really deal with one enemy, per se. Uh, however, if you can take him out super quickly if you want to, or you can try to bypass him like I'm going to do here. It's pretty tough to do, especially on Deadeye, because they, their enemy AI is just ever so much, you know, they can see things from the peripherals a lot longer distance and whatnot. So it does make it a little bit more tough in order to pull this stuff off. Also, this is the um, Cry Engine. Uh, of course, everyone knows the CryEngine uh, because they used it in Crisis, they use it in Star Citizen, or a modified version of it. So the game looks absolutely amazing, and uh, I'm really impressed with the visuals. When you swim, you have a uh, breathing meter that uh, will slowly recharge, of course. There's about 10 enemies in this area total, but I'm bypassing all of them except for one. Other than him, we're really not going to see another enemy until we get towards the hill, and there's one guy that's on a, a balcony or the second floor of one of the buildings. But you're easily able to get by him. So we're just going to wait for this guy here to kind of move on and around. Now, I was toying with if I was going to keep this 100% stealthy, or if I wanted to show you guys a little bit of some different stuff. So... For the most part, as I said previously, we're going to keep this nice and stealth-like. However, there are going to be um, two scenarios where we're going to kind of go in a little bit louder. And uh, I wouldn't say we're going to get into any fights. I don't like to get into any just outgrown fights. I don't, especially on this difficulty, uh, one hit and you're dead. Uh, you can't really survive more than one hit. But as you can see, even though we're underwater, you're going to still be able to be seen. Uh, so you have to be careful. As you can see, our meter almost went all the way up. We just got around him. So that was a very, very tight fit. But uh, you can get around him without him seeing you. There's one guard on the balcony of this uh, building straight ahead that we're heading towards. And then we're going to move to the right of it. There's two more guards that are going to come out that are walking on the top. You can easily get by them as long as you stay to the right side. And these levels, at least this first level, I've only played the first level, so I can only kind of give you guidance on the first level as of right now. But the level is pretty much set up that it's funneling you from one location to the next. Uh, I do believe that in some of the later missions, there's going to be more open-ended gameplay. But as of right now, at least for the first mission, it's kind of open, but it's open in a funnel. So it's just leading you down a path, and then you can choose to go left or right up ahead and then those have different ways and different objectives so we're going to stick to the right and then move along here so we can bypass the guards there is about seven more guards up ahead uh, that you can mess with or not we're going to try to bypass every single one of them except the two that are inside the cave just because i i, I want to try to set up some lures unfortunately uh, guards don't always react to the things that you uh, place close to them. Then again, it could be maybe the rocks just landed a little further away than what they're programmed to actually be able to hear. So there's two guards you gotta worry about up here. We're gonna try to do, now easily you can, if you watch my stream that I did of this, uh, you can easily take them out by doing a lure on one then um, attacking the other, or meleeing the other silently, and then you can go and silent the other one. However, we're going to try to sneak around them. We're going to use um, a rock. This is the lure. This allows you to throw something, a uh, pretty much infinite amount. It's just that there's no way for you, at least on this difficulty, and even on the normal difficulty, or actually, we didn't, in this uh, preview access that, that some people got to play, uh, there was no way to actually know how far you're aiming a rock. So you just kind of have to base it off of your own best guess. But once you know that both of them have kind of been fooled by it, then we're going to try to get around. Now, 
Now, once you're in these little things right here, as you can see, it's they won't be able to see you clearly. Uh, so even though there's no markings that say I'm hidden or not, uh, in these bushes, you're pretty much hidden. So we're going to throw another one just to get him to look in the other direction. But as you can see, if you look on the right side above our ammo, you see our caricature and our, like, uh, when we go prone and whatnot. When it's white, it tells you that you're pretty much out in the open. When it turns dark, then that lets you know that you're hidden. But if you go into a specific location, even though you're hitting, you can still be seen. So you still need to make sure that you're uh, playing it safe, of course. So we're going to sneak along this left route here. There's going to be this tiny little hole that we can get through up ahead. As you can see, it turns black and then white again. We got a guard up here. You need to be careful with him. Do not start moving until he is way past where you're about ready to look because he will be able to see you because he does kind of like a head swivel both left and right before he gets out of this area. So just wait until he's actually moving in the other direction before you start to go. All right, so I tried to lure these guys. However, unfortunately, I couldn't get both of them to get lured. And one of them is directly in the line and path that you need to follow. So eventually we're just going to end up go ahead and actually taking them out. I was hoping that the lure would work, but not being able to know exactly where it's going to land makes it really tough. And as you can see, I threw it. One of them went to it and the other one just went to the other direction. So I don't think it, it makes both of them distracted and I don't know exact distance is required for the rock to actually be able to be heard by any of them. As you can see, I try to do a few different ones. But at this point, I'm just like, you know what? It's probably just go ahead and take them out because I can't go that way. He's going to see and uh, we can't go straight ahead because the other two will see there too. So let's just go ahead and take them out. Even though they all have helmets on, you can still take them out with one shot. However, you do need to be rather close. This is not a weapon where you can be even a little bit further away. Uh, it'll take multiple shots even from a little bit distance away, even if you're lining up a headshot. So you do need to be careful when you're using uh, this specific suppressed pistol. This is the one that you automatically get from the start, at least in the build that I was playing. I'm not sure what the final uh, version is going to be like. This is an early version. The game does come out very soon, or it's already out by the time you see this. But uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and move on. The last and uh, the last three objectives are all up here. You're going to be able to move to the left or to the right. If you go to the left, you have another long shot to do. If you go to the right, you have another long shot as well as a uh, specific objective that you need to do, which is to kind of to take down the uh, the dish arrays. My suggestion, don't do what I do here. Uh, don't stealth past these guys. You need to take them out. And let me explain why. So because we don't have a suppressor on our rifle, at least at this point, uh, obviously you wouldn't have to worry about them if you have a suppressor on your rifle. But because one of the main objectives is right up here and to the left, if you were to shoot and start taking out your target, even though the target is thousands of meters away, these folks here will hear it and they will come. The same exact thing for when you're up in the next area. If you don't take out every single person inside this cave that we come into, they will automatically hear whatever shot you do, even if the people a thousand yards away do not hear. So in these two specific locations, you want to actually take the enemies out. Obviously, stealthy preferred, or you can go loud and proud, whatever you want. But uh, take them out, and uh, that way when you start your objective, uh, you don't have to worry about anyone coming up behind you and shooting you. Me, you know me, I always like to try to bypass enemies when I can. I, I always feel there's a challenge in that for me. Uh, however, in this situation, because of the weapon we have and because of how loud it is, you, you need to take them out, uh, otherwise you will not be able to remain undetected. 
So, especially these two. So there's this guy here, and there's another one right below him. You need to take those two out as well. Uh, we're going to take these two out over here. However, these two guys still hear your shot all the way from when we're going to get up on our perch. And it's very far away. But I guess it's understandable that they could hear because this is a cave. And you're shooting literally just outside the cave. So it makes sense that they would be able to hear the shot. So I do like that realism. Obviously, though, uh, if you replay these missions, you're going to have a better sniper rifle anyways. And you're also going to have probably a silencer. So then you ain't going to have to worry too much about it. But if you're doing it like me, uh, with the base weapons that you get from the very start of the game, then this is how You it don't is. need to kill me. You don't need to do this. But I do need to know where your friends are. Straight ahead. I gotta tell you, man, the, the, the melee takedowns are some of the smoothest and amazing that I've seen in the video game. I love the first person way that they interact. Uh, you really feel like you're that character taking these guys out, you know, although the voice acting can be kind of whatever, but it's still just so immersive uh, when your character is doing it in first person. One thing to note is you can get stuck on the terrain, so you need to be very careful. Like, even if it's the, the tiniest of rock that you would think in a normal game you'd just be able to walk over, Sometimes you can't, and you'll get stuck, and you'll have to actually jump. This is this is a complaint that I've had since the uh, Sniper Ghost Warrior contracts. However, it doesn't look like it's been fixed. There's going to be many occasions where you're, you're trying to get up on a ledge, but you can't move forward because there's this tiny rock, and you have to jump in order to get around it. And, of course, when you jump, you make so much noise that it just defeats that whole purpose of trying to be stealthy in that area. So it can be a little tough to get used to. And again, make sure you took out those other guys that I showed you in the first part of the cave. Otherwise, um, you will not be able to do this Control. silently. It's Raven. Do you read me? I actually go back Out and do clear, it, but Raven. I don't show it. I'm nearly at the OP for the communication facility. Go inside one of the buildings. I need to get a map. All that comms equipment will draw a lot of power. Plenty of possible targets. I might do it. Or at least get them to look out of a window. Roger. Good luck. Raven, you need to disable both antennas. We're still picking up data streams from the facility. Novikov can't work without power. Roger. I'll see what I can do. All right, so first things first Raven, is you have these. You can further sabotage Rashida's supply chain if you disable this comms facility. Acknowledged. There are multiple power transformers. Left side, mark 1-1 one, one, and 1-2, one, and right side, mark 2-1 and 2-2. Two, two. Do you have visual? Roger, control. Looks like they're hooked into the satellites. No power, no signal. You need to shoot the fuse boxes in order to deactivate them. So this one, we're going to go a little loud and proud. We're actually going to do a specific kill, which is going to use the barrels. There's a few enemies that you do need to take out, especially the two snipers. If you don't take out the two snipers, then you screw yourself up because you'll get shot immediately as soon as you fire, after you fire, should I say. Ah, oh, it just looks so good. But it is kind of weird when you shoot them in the arm or something and then they end up <laughs> dead for some reason. Um, but obviously, just one bullet from the sniper will take them out. doesn't matter where it lands. Now, you'll see a mark. That's just letting you know where the wind is. But you need to be the one that addresses how far up or down you need to actually aim. You need to... I am adjusting my scope enough so that uh, I have it set for 800 no meters so you can and of course you need to switch over to your binoculars to know exactly how far Raven. away he is we're tracking signals from that location shit he's inside then for sure he's inside then for sure which is why you need to get him outside the question is how 
I'll leave that up to you. Now, I don't know how to do this silently. I could not figure a way out how to take every single enemy out here without someone being alerted because there's too many enemies really close. And obviously it's meant for a second playthrough because if you have a second playthrough, then you can tag, you can lure, you have different specialized ammo. Or if you've turned in some of your previous targets, then you can go and purchase that ammo and do it. But we're doing it with the base weapon and we have nothing special added so we only have this weapon and what it originally came with which makes it a lot tougher to do so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start the first objective which is going to be to get the uh the take away the discs or the the dishes the data but we need to look uh because there could be another sniper i believe there's two snipers in this first section and if you don't take both of them out uh, immediately once the firing starts, they will take you out like within one shot. So you have to be careful. I'm just looking for the second one, which he is going to be on this roof here. And once you have your distance lined up, make sure you have your meter setage and boom goes the dynamite. Love the slow motion. All right, now that your snipers are taken out, then we can get the party started. So we have four of these that we need to take out. Four transformers. Uh, one, 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 two, two, one, and two, two. So they're all around 920 meters away. I think the longest one's about 930 or something like that. So as long as you know exactly what they are, you can get them done pretty quickly. We're going to shoot those four first. The target's going to come out and he's going to start running. All right, there are multiple different times that you can shoot one of the barrels. Uh, he's going to be driving a car, and all you got to do is line up the barrels, try to shoot him if if that's the route you're going to go for. But the best one to do is to wait until he's further out here. Uh, the one where we killed like one of the first guys who was only 800 meters away. So let's get this party started. It looks like I disabled the first antenna. Roger that. This is where he's going to be coming out of. You can see him right there. So if you wanted to, you can shoot that barrel right there. However, I just did because you don't know the distance until you look up with your binoculars. Just did not have enough time and to really get the shot lined up. But that's not the one I originally wanted to aim at anyways. I just literally saw that at the last moment. I was like, ooh, maybe I can get him a little earlier. But go ahead and finish the rest of your objective here. Second antenna is down. Now that's done, we're going to wait for him to come. Make sure you can find out exactly what the meter is away on this, and then get ready to shoot the barrels. There you go. Confirmed. Novakov is eliminated. One of my better shots. I'll add that to my kill point. Data on previous engagements. Yeah. Useful if I'm shooting under similar conditions again. Copy that. Look for intruders. Stay in calm. Out. Don't worry, nobody is on to you. Nobody knows where you are. Those are just when you go loud and proud, but those you can't really defend yourself against when you have this specific weapon that you start out with. You just can't be as stealthy as you want to be. So now we have one more objective, one more target to take out. And again, you need to take out these, uh, how many is there? One, two, three, four soldiers in this area. So since we're coming back this way, we'll start with the two up here and then we'll get the two that are more down. Now we're going to wait until this guy is a little further along his path so that the guy on the right side isn't going to be able to see him. Uh, 
The supplies you're hiding, where are they? Close. Head that way. Liar. Now, there's also bounties that you can do uh, on these missions, challenges that you can complete. So just because you do your main objectives does not mean that your mission is over. You can always go back in and continue on by taking out certain bounties and doing different challenges in each and every single mission. Control, it's Raven. I'm approaching the Overwatch for Payne's training camp. Roger, Raven. Do this quietly. If you alert them, you're going to be knee-deep in hostiles. Payne has sniper training, too. Expect the worst. Yep. It's always tricky without a flanker guarding my back. Do it smoothly, and you won't need one. Like I said, before we do that, we're going to go ahead and finish and take out these two guys. I just skipped ahead a little bit because it took a while to get all the way back around to this guy. Now I'm going to show you one thing about this is if you're a little further away, it can be, like I said, harder to actually get that headshot. So you want to be careful here as you'll see. Um, you think you might have a headshot lined up, but you don't. Shit, I'm out of Looks like we would have hit them right there, but you can see they're on you immediately. And look, they, I mean, he shot me once and took my health down to 32 so you can't get shot more than once or twice uh, especially if you're going up against a sniper a sniper will take you out in one bullet whereas some other people have assault rifles but here we go it's time for another long shot think of these as little playgrounds Almost like uh, Hitman Sniper in a way. Uh, there's different cool things that you can do. Like in Control. the first one we did, Eyes there was the a thing that you could crush you on the target. Shot. Negative. He's moving too much. I keep losing visual. Hard to hit a moving target at that distance. Yeah, I need However, to you would have needed to lure to lure him to that uh, specific uh, uh, crane to drop on him. Sir, this is the usual stop We're just going to do a classic way. kill here. We have a very, very long shot. We know how far the meteorage needs to be, and we're going to go ahead and make it happen. Just by telling you not to stand here. Sir, we certainly hope you won't. Right between the bars. Well, that's Rashida's program screwed. Confirmed. Good kill, Raven. Always. All right, ladies and gents, we have completed all targets, and now we can go ahead and exfiltrate. We'll turn in all four missions at the same time. Uh, this location can be fast traveled. You can go and fast travel to different locations as well. It is an open kind of uh, level. Each level will have fast travel points that you can get to. But once you turn in a mission, you can come back into the same mission and complete the rest. But there you go. Zinda province completed. Obviously, we only completed 21% of it, meaning that there are other things to do, like your challenges, your bounty hunting, and all that kind of stuff, and bounties. Uh, so you're going to be able to you know, do multiple things. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And of course, I've been your host, Sinistrain01, and I'll see you next time. Peace out. Bitches!